Hi, I'm Andrew Kabatam. Today I'm going to teach the lecture Introduction to Chinese Confucianism. We will going to look at the basic fundamental question that Confucian asks. Our difficulties, however, it's impossible for us to understand Chinese Confucianism considering the radical difference between Western culture and Eastern cultures. It is possible for the Western audience to understand Confucianism. Let's take a look at some example. Does any one of you have never heard of trolley problem? I guess most of you have heard of it, so I will make it quite brief. Here we have a conversion version of trolley problem. As you may know, there is a trolley running on the track. It is non-stoppable. What you can do is just pull the lever to change its direction. In case one, if you pull the lever, you will save five strangers. But your closest family member, like parents, children, uh, lovers, will be killed. If you do nothing, however, your family member will be safe, but five strangers will be killed. Who will you save? Will you pull the lever or do nothing? And do you think your choice is moral? Now, before uh, I explain the answers, let's move to case two. The case two is reversed. Now, the position of the strangers and your close family members change. Here, if you pull the lever, you will save your close family members, but five strangers will be killed. If you do nothing, however, you will save five strangers, but your close family member will be killed. Who will you save and why? And do you think this is a moral choice? In my teaching, I realized that uh, the Western audience, uh, strangely, they choose, uh, they, they choose life as if they were Chinese because most of them choose to save their family. The only difference is that whether they will pull the lever or not. In case one, nearly most do nothing because it can save uh, their family member by not pulling the lever. In the second case, however, people define some pull the lever in order to save the family, some do not. However, the people who choose to save their family is more than those who choose not to. But none of them consider their choice as moral. Because in Western philosophy, we have a different understanding on the concept of morality. Traditionally, we may regard morality as an act following God's commandments or bring benefits to the whole society like the utilitarianism, like J.S. Mill, they argue so. And for Kantian, they argue that morality is a duty to certain innate moral principles which are universal, like human rights, for example, freedom, equality, the leftists love these kind of abstract ideas. But for Confucian, morality is something very concrete, it's not some abstract human rights idea, it's concrete passion, moral passion, moral emotion, which is natural, which is uh, accessible to everyone. Confucian argued that all, all moral values are the attachment of interpersonal relationship. You must manifest the moral values within the interpersonal relationship. Confucian himself argued, for example, Filial piety is the root of benevolence. How Tai Ya Zhe Kei Wa Yan Zi Bun Yu. The love, family love, is the foundation of moral practices. Similarly, Manchus argued that uh, there are five basic relationships where we manifest moral values differently according to our roles and the uh, uh, different social roles of the others. Affection between father and the son, righteousness between monarch and ministers, specialization between husband and wife, order between the elderly and the young, fidelity among friends. 
In particular, filial piety is the foundation, is the most important moral values, most important moral emotion. It's even regarded as a big crime in old Chinese law if you fail to practice filial piety. In 1791, under Georgian dynasty of Korea, two Catholics, Yin Ji Chong and Guan San Yong, was, were executed because they refused to practice the Confucian ritual of ancestor worship. This, refu uh, this refusal is regarded as a um, violation of the Chinese Confucian ethics and also Korean Confucian ethics. It sounds strange. It sounds a bit ridiculous. How can you execute two persons for not practicing ancestor worship? It should be their freedom of religion. So, is it possible for us to understand Chinese Confucianism nowadays? Is it possible for us to make sense of Chinese Confucianism in 21st century, not only in the Western world, but also in the East Asian world? At least, philosopher Heidegger think it is not that possible. In Heidegger's book, On the Way to Language, he has an interesting dialogue with a Japanese friend in remembrance of their departed friend, uh, Kuki Shushu, which, who is a very famous Japanese philosopher. Kuki Shushu tries to introduce German philosophy to Japan, particularly the aesthetic, the study of the meaning of art, philosophy of art. However, Heidegger disagrees, because Heidegger thinks that uh, East Asians does not really need concepts to grasp the ideas. As Heidegger said in the dialogue, the question whether it is necessary and wise for, for East Asians to chase after European concept systems. So here, there are two things. On one hand, it is possible for Westerners to use the Western conceptual framework to grasp the East Asian ideas, to understand East Asians. On the other hand, it is suitable for East Asians to use the Western conceptual framework to articulate their own philosophy. Heidegger doubts the possibility of transcultural understanding. I agree but disagree with him. Because on one hand, Heidegger is correct. We need to pay attention to the particular cultural context, different philosophical interests and different, co different approaches lead to different conclusions. However, if Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Westerners all are human beings, they should share common and universal reasons with a universal concern about their life which is known as the ultimate concerns uh, in Christian theology or philosophy. Portalic, in his book, Systematic Theology, argues that man is ultimately concerned about his being and meaning. To be or not to be, is, in this sense, is a matter of ultimate, unconditional, total, and infinite concern. What is the meaning of life? is a universal question. Both East and the West ask the same question in different expressions with different answers. Chinese philosophy focuses on the morality and the moral practice, while Christianity focuses on the salvation from sin, which are different dynamics of the meaning of life. 